Hello, everybody. I'm Raina from Garden District Bookshop, and this is our first virtual happy hour of 2021. Yay! Thank you all for joining us this evening. Tonight, we're going to tell you talking about book clubs with a couple of ladies who have started their own book clubs locally here. Um, first, I am going to bring into the room Angelique White Miller, whose book club is the NOLA Expressions Book Club. Hi there, Angelique. And Caroline Bergeron, whose book club is in in bed with books Nola. Hello, 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 hello. Hi there. And um, since this is virtual happy hour, we usually start with like, what are you drinking? So we can do that. Angelique, what you got? I am drinking a red wine. It's called Red Decadence. Ooh, good name. <laughs> I like it. And I love your cup. Is that like glittery? What is happening? Yes, I caught Pier One before they left. This I caught it. Oh. Very nice. Yes. Caroline, what are you drinking? I've got hard seltzer in a jar. Hard seltzer in a jar. Good. Mm -hmm. I have my kitty cup still. I made myself an iced coffee and put a little cinnamon vanilla liqueur in it. It's a very dangerous drink. <laughs> Luckily, there's only one here, and I cannot leave to go get another one. So you're stuck. Well, thank you, ladies, for joining me for my first virtual happy hour of 2021. Um, book clubs are like a thing that people put on their New Year's resolutions a lot, read more, read harder, things like that. And so I thought this would be a good place to start off. And for everybody who is watching, if you have any questions about books, book clubs, reading habits, specific questions for Caroline, Angelique, or myself, type them in the comments. We will see those. We answer those. We appreciate that. And if you don't have a question, just type it in and say hi. We love to see where you're watching from. So that's always great to see friends and family or, or customers and see where you guys are watching from. So you can type that in anytime, and we will respond. Um, so Angelique. You have Nola Expressions Book Club is the name of your book club. Yeah. And I was, we were talking a little bit earlier and your book club started like 10 years ago. That's awesome. Yeah, we started like in 2010, we branched off of kind of a book club we had at work that, you know, kind of fell through. <laughs> so, uh, me and my best friend Maria really just were like, no, we still want to read and talk about books. So, we started it and we originally were like going to each other's houses, but instead of that, we wanted to be where anybody could come, anyone could feel comfortable. So we started going to local like coffee houses and really we go to, we were going to CC's on Esplanade for mm -hmm. the most part. Uh, they have a little room and we would just post up there and anybody was invited, not just you know, people who we knew it was open to the public, like whoever wanted to come can come. And it's still pretty much that way. How did you get the word out like back then? Because I know now you have an Instagram and a Facebook page. Did you always have those or how did you like get in touch with people? Um, I had a Facebook page when we really started promoting, but I wasn't really using it that way. We were just kind of word of mouth. Um, one of our members, again, she just, she found out from someone we knew and we had, we had never met her before. She came to the book club and she stayed with us until recently with the pandemic, of course. Um, but she had been with us and we had never met her before that coming, just her reading the book and coming to the book club. That's awesome. Just like meeting other book lovers. Yeah. And we have people who are hit or miss. They come sometimes, they come once a year, uh, but it's it's mm -hmm. fine. As yeah. long as you read the book and you want to talk about it, even if you didn't read the book, we always find some way to connect it and people will read the book later. Like, I didn't think I would enjoy that. Right. Let's really talk about it. Did, um, so with, with the pandemic, have you guys done, are you doing like Zoom stuff? How are you, how are you meeting? We switched to Zoom. Our last like in-person meeting was in March and I think we were like at Bayou Wine Garden and that was the last time we met in person. After that, we've been completely virtual. Yeah, yeah, at the bookstore too, we, I think April is when, we, we skipped a couple months because we didn't know what to do. You know, pandemic's yeah. happening. What do we have? Is it gonna be over in a little bit? What's happening? And then we switched over, I think it was April or May. 
and Caroline, so your um, your book club is in bed with books, Nola. Mm -hmm. And um, when did when did you get started doing that? I started that um, 2019, May of 2019. So wait, yeah, oh my God, it's 2021. For a second, I was like, it's almost been two years. That can't be right. But yeah, it's almost been two years. Um, so I started it a few months after working at the bookshop and mostly, okay, there were a couple reasons why. One was because the book club at the bookshop had me thinking about starting my own just with like friends because I, I had friends that or have friends that like to read anyway so I thought it wouldn't be that hard to get together with these friends to do that and two I really missed college and how our classes were basically more like professional book clubs where we would analyze and you know all talk about a book in a like a, a group setting I really missed that um I also wanted something to like have content to create for so doing the Instagram and website and everything are just good, good to, you know, I guess have on your portfolio or resume just as an extra thing to do. Um, so yeah, we started about two years ago and same with Angelique's. We, uh, the members are pretty in and out, except we do have a couple people that come every time. Like my best friend, Allie, she'll come pretty much every month. Um, and we started out in a public space too, because I also thought, you know, I want to be somewhere where anyone can come. And we do have people who come who hear about it just from Instagram or Facebook. And I like, we've never met them before, which is so cool. Um, but they're all, you know, in the bookish people world. <laughs> and we originally started out at City Park, uh, like right next to a little lake. And everyone would bring like a drink and some food and we just sit on a picnic blanket and I'll just talk about the book and snack and drink. And it was really great. Um, and during the winter months, we would meet at Cafe Du Monde and just sit outside or inside wherever, which was like right next to our original meeting spot. So it was an easy transition. But since the pandemic, we've just been on Zoom, which has actually been pretty cool because people from all over the world can attend. Like I have a friend in Ireland right now who will come to our club meetings, which is very cool. cool. And she obviously wouldn't be able to do that if it was still in person or even just people from different cities in the country. So I think it's sad not to be in person because it's nice to have face-to-face -face interaction, but it's also even more inclusive to have it virtual. Yeah, I think we definitely see that. Um, for the most part, our book club members of the bookstore are the same as the ones that we have had. But it feels like maybe every other month, there's somebody, one or two people who send me an email and say, I would like the link this month. Yeah. yeah. And then they come and they come for, you know, one month or, or you know, a couple of them have, have stayed. And we'll see when it transitions over back into in-person if those people will come to the actual bookstore, you know, for the in-person event. But um, with the with it, all of our events, it's Zoom allowing it to be kind of this more inclusive, like you're talking about, where you don't have to worry about, you know, do I need a babysitter? Or, you know, maybe you visited the bookstore or, or you know, you came on to, you found you on the, on Instagram, but you're not there. You don't live in New Orleans, so you can't like come mm -hmm. to the book club and this allows for, for those people to drop in too. So um, I'm interested to see what the transition is when we come back, when we come out of COVID, you know, and if there's some sort of, uh, some, some sort of hybrid situation that happens sometimes, it depends on how many members you guys have for, that want, you know, that, that want to come, but can't because due to, you know, some reason. Okay, so we have a couple questions. First, Hope, hi Hope. Hope has been coming to, like watching Virtual Happy Hour almost every single week since we started in April. And Happy New Year to you uh, very much. <laughs> but let's see, Linda is asking, how do you choose the books for your book club? So uh, Angelique, how do you guys pick the books that you read? Um. So we've had a couple, we've done it a couple different ways. We first, we did like suggestions all in a jar. And we would kind of just choose from the suggestions that all the members made. 
um, based off the last read, like if something was too heavy, like let's go from the pile and find something a little lighter or something. We we've, we've done like two, three or different mysteries. Let's try to find something else. Let's find historical fiction. Um, but we've kind of just been taking turns and especially since the pandemic, like, hey y'all, what about this? And like, how does everybody feel about this? Mm-hmm. And just going from that and just majority would rule. Yeah, that, that um, so you guys pick like just one month out or how long do you give yourselves to read it? We usually go about four to six weeks. I have a couple people, we all work together. Um, mm-hmm. And then it's just, yeah, people are working adults, you know, you have things going on. So we try to do between four to six weeks, at least a month. But we usually, when we're at that meeting, we try to pick the date for the other meeting while we're all there. Like, that's how everybody look at their calendars and try to see if this is a good date for you. And if something comes up, we'll all, you know, I'll shoot out an email or a messenger to, you know, like something came up, y'all, can we change dates? Right. And what so about you, Caroline? Um, I kind of have an opposite approach of how we put the books. I just, so far, I've been the only one to pick them. Um, and usually I just do a bunch of research because, Angelique, do you read your books before? Or I guess you don't. You haven't read the books before you pick them, huh? There's been a couple of times um, where I've read a book like on my own. And it's like, yeah. it's so good to actually talk to with the group. And so we've mm-hmm. gone back. Um, I did that with one of them. I did an author that I absolutely love named Tiff- Tiffany Rice. I read one of her books and it was, well, I'm sorry, I read all of her books. But <laughs> I was like, I think this would be good. And I had the book club read it. A couple people liked it. And then one one of my book club members, like she fell in love with the series too. So I have a super nice. fan with me. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. So I usually just uh, look into it. So for all of our authors for the book club, we um, read contemporary works by women, BIPOC, and queer authors. So that narrows it down to what uh, like identity of author that I'm getting at. Um, but usually, I'll like see a book and read into it, or you know how Google sometimes gives you like a few pages of a preview, and I'll go off of that and I'll decide on that, or else I have read it before. And I'll be like, yeah, this is a great book that everyone can talk about. And I know the people in the club will like their tastes will like, I guess, correspond with it. Um, but usually it's just research, uh, which is fun to do because that exposes me to a bunch of different titles and kind of I keep tabs on ones that I might want to use in the future. But yeah. Do you guys do research about the author and like, maybe interviews and stuff like that around either, I guess, ahead of time or like leading up to the book, the club meeting itself. So you have this bigger concept than just the book. Do you guys do that? I do that leading up to, not not before, not like with the initial research of the book itself. I'll do that once it's already been picked and we've all started reading it. Yeah. Yeah, I do it is leading up to after we've made our pick after usually after I finish the book, I might do some research on the author or read a little bit because I don't want to I want to read the book clean mm-hmm. uh, and then find out more about the author. Yeah, I I end up ha- doing some of that research leading up to it, too. And as much it's almost just a, as the leader of the book club. I, I like to have these like tidbits that be like, oh, fun fact. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know if you know this, but she lived in England for three years. You know, like things yeah. like that, like weird little stuff. Um, and those things can help get the conversation going and keep it going. Maybe if if something falls a little flat, uh, to to keep those going too. Yeah, and one of my social media posts, I always do three posts uh, per book. One is like the initial, this is what the book is, and this is what the date is. And then the next one is always a portrait of the author so that we can all see what they look like just to, you know, give recognition to the books that we're reading and like the authors who are creating the books we're reading. And I'll always put a quote from um, an in-print interview that they have. So I usually, I mean, I always have to read at least one interview that they give. And I have yet to uh, do that for a book where an author doesn't have like a good interview. So I feel like, most published authors have some good 
personal insight somewhere on the inner webs to give, you know? Yeah. So, okay, we talked about how you choose books for book club. What's the most surprising read you've read for your book club? So I guess something that you didn't think was gonna be as good as it is, or maybe you didn't, it, it surprised you that you had to read for book club. That. <laughs> one of the, so one of the books that we read, actually the last book we read and the book before that, and both of them were one particular member, she, 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 she always picked historical fiction and historic, it's not that historic. I usually, I usually like modern time books. Mm -hmm. I don't like even like going back to the fifties. I'm okay with flashbacks, but we're in the fifties yeah. and the thirties. It's like, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, but she gave me two. One was called Summer Wise by Beatrice Williams. And I struggled with it at first, but once I got into it, I loved it. Um, and I liked it way more than I thought I would. By the time we got to the book club meeting, I was like, I didn't finish it, y'all. Y'all can ruin it for me. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I still, I'm a person, I can't do not finish a book. I'm going to finish it. Uh, just because. And then the other one was, I can't remember the author's name, but it's called um, When We Left Cuba. And that was such a, such a good book. And when she picked it, I didn't think I was going to like it. And I loved it. Chanel Cleeton. Yes. And they actually have two other books in the series I plan to read. And I did not think I was going to like it at all. See, I love that. I love that when they catch you off guard like that. Like It's something I never would have picked up for whatever reason. Who knows why? And then you end up not only pushing yourself through to read it, making sure you get to the end, but then once you have these people to talk to about it, and even, sometimes you even get to the end and you're like, oh, I, okay, I, I liked it, but I didn't love it. And then you go talking to people and they're like, well, what about this, what about this? And you're like, you're right. I didn't think about it that way. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, I, I've, I've um, encountered that even with book clubs I've had with just a couple of friends, which I've done personally in the past, or like the book club with the bookstore where there's, you know, 12 people, and we're all in these totally different opinions, don't really know each other. And it's the same thing. You get to dig into it in a way and look at the book in a different way. I love that. I love that. All right, what about you, Caroline? What's, what's a read, a book that surprised you? Um, that you guys read? So, well, not that it's, it kind of surprised me. So we did do the Memory Police a couple months ago. And I was sort of scared, yes. Great, great book. I was sort of scared that we wouldn't have enough to talk about because usually in our discussions, we try to like incorporate modern problems or like social issues into like with what we're reading. And I was a little nervous with that book um, because it is so uh, surreal and fictional, but the club loved it. Like the members really liked it a lot and we had a lot to talk about, so I thought that was, it surprised me, but um, it wasn't like, I don't think we've had one that I, I mean, since I choose them, I don't think I've hated any of them or just couldn't get through any of them or anything, but that one surprised me that the discussion went so well when I was kind of nervous for it. That is one of, I guess, one of the sort of advantages if you're mostly picking all of the books yourself, you're kind of vetting them as you go along. You wouldn't necessarily mm -hmm. pick one that you think you're gonna hate. Like, why, yeah. would, why would you do that to yourself? Okay, so here's the sure Some of my members would be like, ah, we don't, we feel that some of the way, about, some of the books I know I've chosen, I've purposely done it to be a challenge because I know it yeah. would, then they wouldn't pick up if it wasn't mm -hmm. chosen. Yeah, that's what I like try to aim for with most of them because I try to get the titles that aren't as mainstream. I mean, the Memory Police definitely is, but most of them, I don't think many people would pick out of the store or like hear about from just mainstream uh, reviews and stuff. So that's another reason why I do all the research to pick them too. One of the books that got me last year, I think it was, we read Pachinko uh, by Min Jing Lee. And um, it, uh, I do not 
like big books. Like I am intimidated by big books. I, I don't say I don't. I'm intimidated by them. If I if I pick this up, I pick this up right here. I'm like, oh, I will totally read that. I will read that. I will love it. I know it. It's great. And even at the memory police, I'm like, all right, this is on my line. This is my line. Um, and I'm wrong, ninety percent of the time. I don't know why I can't get past this, but Pachinko is like this big. Like it's massive. Yeah, I don't have it with one. me right now, but it, it's a big book. And as we're voting at the book club, I'm like, oh, please don't pick that one. Please don't pick that one. Please don't pick that one. And of course they're like, oh, we've got to read the Jingo. So, what, you know, I had like three months and I read it. And of course I, I loved it. It was, it, uh, there wasn't a wasted word in the book. You know, it, it, it needed every single one of those pages. And now, it's on, it is on my shelf back here. I bought one for myself, didn't, you know, just to have. Um, but that definitely surprised me. I thought yeah. that was gonna, I'd have to slog through that and I was gonna hate it at the end. I had to figure out something to talk about and all of these things. That's so. length is definitely something I look for when picking the books too. I try not to have them exceed like 300 pages, like 300, 320 pages. Because like Angelique was saying, people have stuff going on and most people don't read as much as we do. So, you know, getting one book a month and if it's like more than 350 or something pages and, you know, I don't want to assume that people can just fit all that in their schedule. Even though, as you were saying, like a lot of people's intentions are to read more. Sometimes it's just not, you know, not possible to read a huge book in time sometimes. <laughs> And that's also when we go to this one, we're not married to the, oh, we do it every month. Yeah. We do happen to pick a big book. It's like, okay, mm -hmm. now we know we're going to need longer than a month. Yeah. Me. And I like that, that style you allow yourself because you don't, you're not a rigid, rigidly set to a certain date um, every month. You can kind of play with it. And it, Angelique, it sounds like your, your book club is kind of this mixture of like friends and just people you've met strictly for the book club. Yeah, it um, really is. And that allows you to kind of have this a little bit more freedom to, to mix that up. Um, all right, so if somebody wanted to maybe start their own thing with friends, or without friends, I guess, I feel like starting with friends is easier to start. Um, Definitely, yeah. What advice would you give them? Do you have any good like how to just how to start it out? You want to go first, Caroline? <laughs> um, I guess so. <laughs> I don't know. I guess just stick with it. I mean, like you said, with the, like once you have a couple of friends that you know you can lock down to do it with, then you will all of you like you and your friends will see how well it goes and how enjoyable it is, and you just have to get that word of mouth out basically um so when we do get new recruits it'll be because like the core members will recruit people they know and i don't know it really is just you need to have a good solid like one or two people that you know you can get on board with it um mm -hmm. uh, i also whenever i first started i posted little flyers around coffee shops around town and then of course social media is a huge thing social media is big for everything but it's definitely the easiest way to get the word out at least. Um, and this, you know, I guess constant, uh, constant uh, content to put out to remind people. Cause a lot of people who don't read as much as we do need that like kind of nag to get into it. So I feel like that's important too. And I agree with all of those things. I think com your commitment to it, if this is what you really want to do, making sure you stick with it. Yeah. And making sure that you are consistent with it. So even if no one shows up, you know, you yeah. still show up because you, you don't know the minute you log off your link or your Zoom, that could be when somebody comes on. And, and so it's just about one, trying to get a couple people, like you said, who are going to go with you and then just remaining consistent. And like, I think Instagram has been great with getting new members and just participating in the whole bookstagram yeah. uh, community has been great. Uh, and that is just, I think that's just great, you know, how you get it going and keep it going. Yeah. yeah. 
I would say, so a few years ago, um, a couple of friends of mine actually came to me because I work at the bookstore, blah, blah, blah. They're like, oh, we want to read more. Let's start, just the three of us will start a book club. And I was all in, was, yes, oh my gosh, yes, it's great. So we each picked one book. So we committed to three months, we each picked a book, right, that's it. So the first month, we all three read the book. Second month, uh, both of them didn't finish the book. And the third month, one of them didn't even start it. So here's uh. my here's my lesson. And then we went, you know what? We're friends. We're get, we're done. We're done with this experiment, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but my my life lesson from that from everybody who wants to start a book club is do it anyway. Because in those three months, we I read three books, two of which I never would have read. Learned a lot about my friends, and also learned what you know, what I need to look for if I wanted to start something like that in the future, what I really, what I'm looking for in, you know, the commitment level that we can do. And I, and we had a good time. We had a good time. Cause it was like, Angelique, you were talking like in the beginning, you guys would get together and you realize, oh, we're just talking and like having a glass of wine and not reading or not talking about the book. And that kind of, you know, we realized that like, that's what we, by the third meeting, we were, we're having still a great time. We have our drinks and we're talking. We just, didn't the book part wasn't working so we had to find you know different people in a different situation to do that we but lost members because of that because we, when we decided like we're going to change format we're not going to be at each other's houses we could still eat and drink somewhere but it just there's a certain comfort level when you're at your friend's house yeah um, like you know like you know where the remote is you know you know you're just gonna get comfortable so it's like we're gonna take go to a public place, be out of our comfort zone. And then we started the format where we would have like, we, we have the discussion questions, we're gonna do this. We can socialize afterwards, but for now, like we're gonna do this. And people were like, we just lost some people. And we gained more people who were looking for that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so having the discussion questions are so important to like keep the conversation on its track for sure. Right. Mm -hmm. And do you guys just sort of have an open discussion format? Like you guys just sit down and just talk, like whoever wants to say something says something, or is it more structured in some way? So we used to be a little bit more structured before the pandemic, like we would do packets where we have like a book summary. Uh, it would have the discussion questions and maybe it would have some different things. Like one of the books we read was Me Mexican Gothic. Uh, it came with a, a book club packet. So we oh, used yeah. that. Uh, so did, uh, what's the other popular book? I can't think of the name of it right now. So I, I know the, Owen, the author is Delilah Owen. Oh, uh, uh, Where the Crawdads Sing. Where the Crawdads. Yeah. yeah. That was a book I thought I was going to hate. And I absolutely loved it. I just remember sitting crying when I was finished. Like, it was oh. so cool. Uh, but those came with packets, so we use that. But other than that, um, Again, when we first started, we would put the packets together, and then when I just kind of took things over, I kept it going, except through the pandemic. And there's been a couple times where I had to make the questions up myself. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, I do that every time. I make like a packet where the first part, like whenever we start the discussion, I will like first give a little background about the author, like what you were saying earlier, because I do think it helps, at, like it usually enriches whatever discussion we have. Um, so do th something about the author and then I'll go into questions. We always started off first thing first is like, how did we actually like the book? We usually rate it. Uh, then we go into questions that I have. It's maybe like, maybe around 10 questions, but you know, whenever everyone's, giving their answer to each question, it'll like branch off to whatever we need it to. It's not like strict or anything, but I definitely have a little line or like train of thought to keep it on, I guess. Um, but yeah, we, we definitely branch out. It, it's not necessarily just on those questions. So question for everybody who's watching, um, are you currently a member of, the book, of a, a book club? Have you been a member of a book club? Have you ever run your own book club? Tell us your relationship to book clubs. Type it in the comments. Like, um, do, are there any questions you have? Have you thought about running your own book club and you have any questions about 
pros, cons, anything like that, type them in. We will answer those questions. Um, yes, Jackie, where the crawdads sing. And I haven't read that. Have you read that, Caroline? I haven't, but I think I know the ending. I'm pretty sure oh, yeah. I know the ending. So I don't think I want to read it now. You know? I think even still knowing the ending, you might still enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, it was it's written. A, the, it's it's well written. Okay. See, I have no Jackie's idea. That's actually in my book club. Oh, yay! Aww. She's hey, the one who kept giving me the books that were challenging. Oh, nice. <laughs> We well, see you, you got to have, have one of those people. Yeah. Exactly. You got to have somebody who who pushes it just a little bit. Oh, cool. And that's Jackie's first book club. See, so that that's interesting. Um I I don't know what I how I would feel about switching book clubs. Um like even if I moved or the book club stopped existing or something right it's not like not like i want to leave sort of of my own accord but you for, you kind of form these bonds with these people that you know you've been meeting for years potentially with all these people and a lot of them you know are the same and you get to know them and you're learning them and you learn the dynamics of this club it's almost like like move switching schools or switching major jobs or switching, you know, things like that is this idea. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever encountered that or thought about that. I don't know. Well, for me, it, I wouldn't say switching book clubs. Cause again, I've been, I've done no expressions for like 10 years now, but I've participated in other book clubs. Um, in fact, uh, because of bookstagram, like I've met, people who, who run book clubs and me and one girl, we, we got a really good friendship and I would participate in her book club all the time because she either was reading something I had read already or it would just be something I wanted to read and it was kind of challenging. Like, you know what? I don't know why I've never picked this book up and this is going to be the reason I do it now. Um, so I would always log on and do her book club. So I wouldn't say leaving one, just being, you could be part of many. That's true. Equal opportunity, give it a shot. How many books though? Okay, so th I, this is uh, an extension of that. Like how many books do you read at the same time? Typically. It's hard for me to do at the same time. Mm -hmm. Like I might have this window, but I maybe can do two at the same time, but I don't like to. Yeah. You will start to get confused. I always read one fiction and one nonfiction at the same time. And usually I will read my nonfiction like in the morning day hours and then fiction at night. Um, and it keeps me, you know, it keeps me, it forces me to read nonfiction because usually I would just want to read only fiction. But um, yeah, I kind of make myself do that. But it, since it is fiction versus nonfiction, it's really easy to not get them confused because they're drastically different things you're reading. Um, but yeah. Yeah. I I usually listening to an audiobook and reading a physical book at the same time. Um, and I try and do the same thing where I try and make them different enough where I'm not gonna mix the storylines. And either that's fiction or nonfiction, or sometimes it's like YA and you know, an adult and something that's definitely different. I made a mistake yeah. recently. I was I was reading and listening to two different books and I didn't know at the time, but they were both like Native American uh, contemporary, but with set on Native American reservations. I was like, how did I oh, yeah. two books? Like they were both like appealing to me at the same time and I just started them and like a quarter of the way through each, I was like, oh crap, I'm not, I'm having yeah. a hard time like remembering exactly um, which pieces, but I try typically to make them different enough where you're not mm -hmm. having that problem. Okay, I'm gonna go back here through some of the comments we've been getting and thank you everybody for commenting. We are, we're looking at them. Um, Tracy Preston is currently in the doing it in the Nook book club, which I have to say I've never heard of this, but I am into that. Yeah, yep. I am into that. Uh, and Reese Witherspoon's recommendations. Okay, that's a, that's a good one too. Like, there's so many celebrities now that have these like book clubs, or now a lot of them they have imprints of their own and these recommendations and lists. Uh, does is there somebody that you guys? 
follow like a celebrity type person that you'd follow and, and do sort of their recommendations? Not strictly, I guess. I don't strictly do that, but like, you know. There's yeah. a really good podcast called The Stacks. Um, the host, her name is Tracy Thomas. I don't know if you've heard of it or not. But I haven't, she but does, I'm gonna look it up right now. It's, it's great. She does like a two part, uh, the episodes are two parts where the first one is she'll like interview um, whatever author she has on. And then the second part will be uh, the actual book club episode. And there are so many episodes. So if you've like read a book already and you see that they have a book club episode, then it's great to listen to it. If you haven't been in a book club with that book yet, or um, just with the authors, like the episodes are great. Uh, they, she has one with Maurice Carlos Ruffin about uh, We Cast a Shadow. Um, so that would have been helpful a few months ago whenever you had the book club for that one. But she's got so many great authors on all the time and she's a great host. So anybody listening, I definitely recommend the Stacks podcast wherever yeah. you listen to your podcast, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and I posted a comment to their website so you can click it and you can find them easily from there. That's a good, see, I, I don't do a lot of that when I'm doing my research, but basically the podcast can do my research for me. I can just, <laughs> if they have an episode on one of the books that we uh, are, are about to talk about or just talked about, throw that yeah. out to your book club members. That's one of the things because I read books outside of the book club. Um, and there was a book, I, so I'm a big Halloween person. I love horror and I love horror books. My book club is like, no, so I don't even, <laughs> It's not too often I even suggest one. I try to get them to read Stephen King every so often. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I read A Head Full of Ghosts by Paul Tremblay, and I couldn't sleep. I was like, I was like so, my nerves were so bad. And then I just went into the podcast, and I just typed in the title of the book, and it pulled up all the different podcasts that had talked about Awesome. Them. Yeah. Um, oh, that's cool. So that's a good idea. Yeah. Go along and listen to who you think might be your. And I found some really good book podcasts. Um, there's one called Book Squad Goals that I listen to a lot. Sometimes I'll read their book and follow along. I know I've done a couple of reviews with them. What's the name of it? Uh, Book Squad Goals. Book Squad Goals. There's another one called The Book Coven, uh, where they have read a lot of the same books that uh, my book club has and just books that I have read. Mm -hmm. So it's been good to just kind of go back and listen to different perspectives, which is the whole reason you have a book club to hear what everybody thought. Yeah. You know, you guys are giving me this good idea because I, there's so many book bookish podcasts out there and I'm kind of obsessed with, I have to do my things in order, right? I listen to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, yeah. And then if I get too far behind, I get overwhelmed and I'm like, Oh, I just stopped listening to it. And you know what I need to do is take a page from you guys and be like, okay, I read this particular book. I only That's have fun. to listen to this particular episode. I don't have mm -hmm. to listen to one, two, three, four to get to number five. Just listen to five, right? I just let it go. There's yeah. a 2021 goal. Just I mean, listen to the episodes you want to listen to. <laughs> it doesn't have to be chronological either. You know, it's all different. It's all different stuff. So yeah, it's not, yeah, yeah. you don't have to do that. For sure. This is virtual happy hour is very therapeutic for me. I'm working through my problems with you. <laughs> Hopefully we're helping other people too. It's great. <laughs> um, Hope read Where the Crawdads Sing twice and loved it. And her husband's the same for her husband. So he read it and loved it as well, which is good. That's a good, if it's a book you guys can share together. Yeah. It, it's a special category of book. <laughs> And Jackie is saying that she dedicates 12 book slots a year to her book club lists, which, yeah. See, That's fair. Absolutely. But to be honest, if we've read 12 books this year, Jackie's read more than that, because Jackie was the one who I got on the Tiffany Rice books. And that's, oh, like, okay. nine, that's like nine to 10 books right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's outside of what we read in the book club, because we read one of the books was, book one was a choice, but then it's like eight other books after that. Right. And yeah. I think we also did that with the after series because we just wanted some. I think that was right after the pan, like right somewhere in April or so. Like we mm -hmm. need something light and fun. We read the after series, and it was just hilarious. It was just great. 
it was really just kind of like you didn't have to think too hard. It really got you talking about the, the crazy things you did in life. We were talking about the crazy things we did in college and in our early 20s. Yeah, look at that. Oh, oh, I see it. Anna Todd is the author. Got it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Not one of our more literary books, but it was, they were fun and we still had great conversation. I'd say that is another book club tip for everybody to read what you guys want to read. Like just because you're in a book club, you don't have to be reading highbrow literary fiction all the time. Like if everybody wants to read like a romance novel, do it because you're still at the end, you're going to have a good time. You're going to have read a book. And at the end, you're going to be like, can you believe she even went back to the restaurant with that lady, you know, with, with that guy or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And you're going to have this conversation and it doesn't always have to be like, you don't have to learn something or, or have a life changing moment after every book you read. You just have to enjoy it. We did read a YA book this year, actually, and it was great. And we did learn a lot. But, you know, like none of us had read YA, of course, in years and years. But it was it was awesome to actually do that as an adult to one like see what the kids are reading nowadays and also just to appreciate it as like an actual like an actual good work of literature but i was also i almost answered that one as one that was most surprised to read because i was also kind of scared to select that one but i'm really glad that we did that kind of branched out and did a ya book but it was great and we really liked it so yeah what was it it was pet by akwake ameze Mm -hmm. and we had read their book as our first ever book club pick and they have amazing work so we wanted to read their YA and it actually had a lot to do with our current social situations so we had a lot to talk about with that book yeah and it yeah. was set in like a fictional New Orleans like they never ex exactly said New Orleans but it was definitely New Orleans so that was also cool well yeah. and she's a local author right well, yeah, they they it's it, they go by pronoun they, but yeah, they they live here. Um, I don't know if it's full time, but they definitely have a house here. Yeah. Do you guys um, do you ever think about that aspect of it too, like them being local in some way, having some connection to New Orleans? Um, I know sometimes with our choices, it's like we read um, uh, we cast a shadow. Mm -hmm. Same. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it definitely one of the biggest draws to it was that he was from here and then just just the aspects of that particular book. Cause that was that was a little bit of a heavy read. Yeah. It is a heavy read for such like a sort of a fantasy right. um, satire. Yeah, satire. It yeah, because it, it went straight into the <laughs> straight into the satire at the beginning. I was like Wow. I tell people about that book, like in the first chapter, you're going to know whether you're going to, you know, whether you're in or, or potentially out of this book, like yeah. stick with it because he, he hits you right up front and then he just rolls with it from yeah. there. It so. was great. Mm -hmm. uh, we had great conversation on it. Yeah. And that's another thing I love. We are, a, we're a good mixed group um, and we don't hold our tongue. You know, we, we can talk about cultural differences, racial differences, and no one gets offended. You know, we just, you know, it's, it's easier. Um, we read, when we read um, The Hate You Give, we oh, definitely yeah. had some good conversations around that. Uh, and you definitely, you know, we had the disclaimer, like it might be uncomfortable, <laughs> but everybody was okay. Yeah. yeah. And that's the best, like, if we can't really talk about it, then, you know, What are we doing? Here? What are we doing? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, for sure. Uh, let's see. I'm looking through the comments here. Tracy's read a bunch of stuff from live streams from, from Santa Fe's independent bookstore, Collected Works. I'm going to have to look up Collected Works. I don't know. That name doesn't sound familiar to me. Um, but has turned her on to Valerie Cower's Meet No Stranger. Have you read that? A memoir and manifesto of revolutionary love. 
Mm-mm. I don't know. But see, this is how this is how we get recommendations right here. So now we're we're gonna have me no stranger. Okay. Um, poet laureate Joy Harrow's recent collection of Native American poetry poetry. Sam Houston or Pam Houston. Her memoir Deep Creek. I don't know any of those. Oh my gosh. All right, so we'll be Googling all of those after we finish, looking them up on the website. And Hope says she hesitantly joined in with a friend who wanted to start a club. We had a meet and greet and to choose our first four or five books. I balked when one selection was Atlas Shrugged, then COVID hit before the first meeting. I promptly bowed out. Understood, Hope. Now, here's the question. Did they continue on without you after COVID? And um, if so, do you, do you think you'll try and rejoin now that Atlas Shrug is over? <laughs> will, you, will you sign back up when, when COVID is passed and it's safe again? Will you be like, oh, I'm back. <laughs> I'm so, so sorry I couldn't come before. Great. We'll see what Hope has to say about that. <laughs> Tracy says, previous book club, books, boobs, and booze. Read The Last Madam. Met by touring the actual house in the French Quarter. That's really cool. Where the brothel yeah, was. Cool. Then meet for discussion at Muriel's seance room. Oh my, that is high. That is a well-organized book club. I, I, I'm going to have to look up books, boobs, and, bo and booze. Because what it, they are. Oh, so another, another cool book club name. Very cool. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, here, there's a question. How did you guys come up with your book club names? Ours is just boring because it's the Garden District Bookshop Book Club. I didn't get any say in that. But <laughs> what, how did you guys pick the names for your clubs? Um, so for mine, I was thinking, like, there are two reasons why it's called In Bed With Books. One, because being in bed with a good book is like the best place ever to be. If you like reading, then you know that being in bed with a book is basically paradise and you can spend hours there and you are somewhere else the whole time. Um, and the second reason was I thought the phrase kind of alludes to being in bed with the enemy and therefore it's like the texts that undermine the oppressor because all of our books are about you know minorities so i kind of thought it works two ways um i don't know if everybody thinks it works two ways or if it's great but that's the one i decided to settle on yeah i like it and for us um the great thing about new orleans is it is so diverse and so enriched in culture. And so that's why we named it Know the Expressions because we wanted to be diverse. We wanted to be not so much anything, you know, one particular thing. We wanted to be an expression of all types of things and all the people who decide to participate. All right. I like it. Okay. okay, we have a book recommendation question. Janet. Mm -hmm is asking, she says she's hosting her, her book club in May, and do we have any NOLA-related suggestions? Okay, so uh, can we assume fiction, or, or is nonfiction also an option? That's a follow-up question for you, Janet. Um, secondly, oh, I think I found NOLA Nash and Crescent City Sin from one of these happy hours, yes? It was an awesome book, and I'm in the middle of book two of it. Um, could have been <laughs> from this happy hour. Um, is it Crescent City Sin? Is that Empire of Sin? Is that the or is that? Am I not getting that title? I'm gonna look. Up I don't. That. I don't know. I've never heard of. I've never heard heard of that title. But for a suggestion, I mean, it depends. If you're trying to keep it a paperback option or a harper option, and I haven't read this book yet, but I loved her first book, um, Britt Bennett's Vanishing Half. I'm pretty sure one of the twins in that book do go to New Orleans. I don't know if it's largely set in New Orleans, but I know it's incorporated and I know it's a very popular and well-received book. 
So I would suggest that one. The Mothers was great. Again, I haven't read Vanishing Half, but I would have no doubt that it's a really good book. So, and there's lots to talk about. I don't. Uh -huh. I haven't read Vanishing Half yet either, but that is a, that's on our list for this year. Cool. Um, and. I would suggest the book we just suggested, We Cast the Shadow, because it mm -hmm. is such a good discussion point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we Cast a Shadow, for sure. If you, if nonfiction is on your radar, The Yellow House, I'm sure you've heard of it. It won the National Book Award last year. Um, it's, it's yeah. one book, one New Orleans. It was it selected for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, the yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, and definitely a worth the National Book Award for sure. Um, it uh, after I finished that book, I actually went and drove by where the house used to be. I don't know if you guys have you guys read the Yellow, the Yellow House yet? Yeah. I haven't read it. Okay. Well, I mean, she's really specific about where the Yellow House was. Um, and I'm like in my head, you know, you sort of like doing the map. You're like, okay, I think I know where that is. And I, I was driving out Chef Mentor to, um, early vote actually, like a couple of months ago. And I saw the side street and I wasn't sure exactly where it was, but I saw it. I was like, oh my gosh, that's Wilson. My husband uh, was like, what are we doing? And I'm like, I have to drive down this little road. It's only like two blocks. It's only just, I know this sounds crazy, but you know, but then you're, um, then I'm there. I'm like, well, that that's it. And I'm, it, it's, it's almost like um, when you're standing in like a piece of history, like you're reading a, a historical plaque or you're in a historical building or something, a battlefield or something. And you're like, oh, I'm in this sort of space that something yeah. big occurred. And in a lot of ways, it's just her and her family, but because of like Katrina and all the levees and the, the long-term implications of all of these things it just felt i had just finished the book and i was like wow this is an empty lot but i know what happened here um so highly recommend after you read it or um drive out that way it's it's a it's a cool and you can actually if you're not from here and you don't have the option to drive out that way you can um the google image so once you read it and you like know where I'm talking about, you can actually Google image down at it and it's a current like picture of it. It's interesting. Yeah. You do learn a lot about New Orleans East from that place. So I would, I mean, I have not yet taken a trip there, but yeah, I would be interested in doing that. If I saw the road too, I understand why you swerved onto the road. Like I would want to see that lot as well. Um, yeah, it's definitely, definitely is one of those things. I wish, I would love more uh, New Orleans books written about like really set in specific areas of the city because the city is so, we're a, we're a big, small city, right? But each yeah. neighborhood uh, has its own history and its own, like really its own history, its own culture, personality, yeah. And I don't know that you couldn't get down every little bitty neighborhood, but there are sections, you know, where it would be really interesting. And there's a lot of books like set pretty much totally in the quarter. But other than that, there aren't a ton that are set in really specific other neighborhoods, I think. Yeah, I think there was a book about um, it's, I had to Google it while you were talking. It was called Nine Lives by Dan. Yeah. Yes. Um, it was set around Katrina and it just talked about he, you gave you pre Katrina, he kind of gave you some of the lead up. But he talked about very specific things in you know, New Orleans, East, the, the lower nine, uptown, being part of the parades and being part of King Rex and things like that. Um, which was very, you know, it's being from New Orleans that we read that some time ago for the book club. It that was such a good read because it's things that you know trigger. We know some of those things from being from here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely another great book. And I'm going to post that in the comment. So yeah, I looked up Crescent City Sin, Janet, and um, it actually didn't look familiar to me. So 
it still could have been here. We, I've done a lot of these since April. Someone could have mentioned it, um, but I haven't read it. And we could, we have it at the bookstore. Actually, I think the first one in the series. Um, I'm definitely going to look look it into it closer now. The cult sure. fiction, yeah, it seems cool. Yeah, and there's so many. I mean, New Orleans has so many, so many writers, and there's there's tons of them like you just you don't know and that kind of blows my mind all the time every time somebody says oh yeah you know they're from here blah, blah, blah. i'm like really how is this happening how are they right there and like either i i mean they sometimes if they're um, if your book is self-published you have to bring the book to us for us to sell it on consignment so you know occasionally an author will take it to a different bookstore or you know they don't know that they could take it to all six bookstores in town so they take it to one and then i don't even know it's there and um so i love when other people give me recommendations i'm working on my own book and i was talking to someone from new orleans who, who wrote who's written books and he was telling me the same thing he self-published and so it was like you like I've never heard of you and I pulled him up and he has like 12 books that he's written and self-published on Amazon and I mean he, he they do pretty good yeah and it's um Amazon makes it very easy to do that and then you a lot of times authors in here if you're listening <laughs> you don't think to you know get 10 of them for yourself and then take them around to the indie bookstores because full disclosure we don't order from amazon so it's not that we don't want your book it's that we're not going to order them you know from our competitors so if you have if you have it and you self-publish it like make do the circuit you know take a couple of weeks and and go around to all of them and most of us will take some of your book on consignment especially if you're a local author because we want, we're all part of the same book community, right? We all want, we want your books and you want to sell your books, so that's good, so. Well, I'll be messaging you when I'm- <laughs> I was about to say, whenever you get to that point, now you know, you gotta bring them out to us. Okay, so as we wrap it up here, I have a couple of finishing questions for you guys. Um, one is, if somebody wants to join your book club, what do they do? And the next one is, what are you reading for the book club or for yourself? What's your What's your twenty twenty one read? So, okay. go for it, Angelique. What do you? How do we join your book club? Um, literally, you can just join. Uh, people can you can come on Facebook or our Instagram, message me. I will make sure you get the Zoom link. Um, but really, you can just show up. It's Again, I know there are a lot of book clubs that do memberships. They only take people certain times of the month. We don't do that. You can come whenever you want. Um, so we're open. And right now we are reading. Where our next meeting is January 10th, which I think is a Sunday, for 3.30. And we are reading Alyssa Cole's When No One Was Watching. And it's such a good book. And I think it has such good topics to talk about. I'm so excited to talk about the book. One of my book club members bought it for me for my birthday. Awesome. And I started reading and I stopped and said, we're reading this at the beginning of the year for the book club. Nice. <laughs> I like that. Really. Um, right, same so thing like. for us. You really just follow us on social media. So follow us on Instagram or Facebook um, or check out the website because I already have the event and the Zoom link posted on our event page. Our next meeting is on January 24th, which is also a Sunday. It's going to be at 6 o'clock. Um, so all of our meetings have been on Sundays at 6 o'clock. The date varies, but we definitely put it out there ahead of time so everybody knows and can read at a, you know their own pace. Um, but what we're reading right now is Little Fish by Casey Plutt. Um, and I'm also reading this. So that was my fiction and nonfiction. Um, but yeah, we're meeting on the 24th. And if anyone wants to DM the book club Instagram or send me a message on Facebook, I'll make sure y'all get the Zoom link. But again, it's all on the website. Basically all the information you need is on the website. Um, but yeah, and that book can be purchased 
I hate to say it, but the fastest way to get it would be Amazon right now um, because it is from a small publisher in Canada. So it is not the quickest get for indie bookstores. Yeah. It happens. We can get it for you. It just might take a few extra days. Yeah. Well, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) That's my job, not your job, Caroline. See, I just (laughs) pull it back. Um, And as for the bookstore, Right now, we're kind of the same thing. Um, If you want to join us, we're all Zoom until further notice at this point. And you you can DM any of our social media. I do that as well. But you can email me, and I'll send you the Zoom link. And anybody can just show up and talk about the book or say, hey, I just wanted to check it out. I didn't finish it. I didn't read the book, but I wanted to see what you guys are all about. For and sure. I'm currently reading The Memory Police, which is our January pick. We meet the second Wednesday of every month. So this is our January pick, and I haven't started it. So anybody who's in the book club and is watching, that book that bookmark is on page one. <laughs> so, But I, had, I have high I have plans. I've already put a bookmark into the book. Any minute. You're now. already this much forward there. That's right. That's a, that, the theme of the evening is just get started. Just do it. Just ask a yeah. friend and read a book and go. So just stick yeah. that bookmark in it and have, like, live right there. You're already halfway to the. I got it. I always encourage people, even if you didn't read the book or you didn't think this was one that you were interested in, to still participate. You could come most times yeah. participate in the conversation or. Absolutely. Like, you might realize, like, oh, maybe that wasn't what I quite what I thought it was going to be. I might enjoy it, and you might go back and double tap it. Mm-hmm. Before I started running the book club and I was just joining, uh, I or just attending, I definitely um, did not finish quite a few of them. And then once I got to the book club meeting and heard everybody what they had to say about it, I was like, okay, I'm definitely finishing it. And then I go yeah. and and do the book. So for sure. Well, mm-hmm. ladies, we made it till six. And I want to thank you both so much for joining me, talking about your book club, talking about books with me. Um, That's it. I hope you guys have a great evening. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in and asking questions and participating. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting us. Yes. Of course. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year.